<laughs> believe in freedom. And unless we are willing to take arms to defend our heritage, we cannot call ourselves patriotic Americans. I'm proud to be free. I'm proud to be an American. And if the man we elected president decides that our freedoms are being threatened and that the world must be made safe for democracy, then I know I won't be alone in the heating the call to patriotism. What is this war about? Each man will have his own answer. I have mine. I am ready to be called. <laughs> now, tonight we have with us the son of Margaret and the late C.J. Reed of Portland, who has witnessed this war firsthand. And I, for one, see no reason why we here at the Liberal Club shouldn't listen to what Jack Reed has to say. What would you say this war is about, Jack Reed? <clears throat> Profits. Brian, can't you grasp that J.P. Morgan has loaned England and France a billion dollars, and if Germany wins, he won't get it back? More coffee? America would be entering the war to protect J.P. Morgan's money. If he loses it, we'll have a depression. So the real question is, why do we have an economy where the poor have to pay so the rich won't lose money? So in Baghdad, have anybody seen that before? Hasn't been on American TV? That was Donald Rumsfeld, the U.S. Department of Defense Secretary, meeting with Saddam Hussein in Iraq, shaking hands, arranging for the next deal to send weapons and agricultural products to Iraq. It's been wiped out of history. So uh, this was on December 20th, 1983, they make a deal, Donald Rumsfeld and Saddam Hussein. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld at that time was special envoy of President Ronald Reagan. Later he became Secretary of Defense under George Bush. Iraq was dependent on buying large amounts of grain as well as armaments from the United States with the billions of dollars in foreign aid supplied by the U.S. government. So the U.S. government is what we just saw in the film, we saw John Reed, played by Warren Beatty in the movie Reds, and Diane Keaton playing Louise Bryant in this great movie, one of the, I, in my view, one of the best movies I've ever seen, asking how is it that we make these deals? How, why would people question anything about what's going on in terms of the deals and the governments and everything? And here we just saw Donald Rumsfeld making the deal on behest of the U.S. corporations with Saddam Hussein. Eight years later, the U.S. began bombing Iraq. Rumsfeld had by then returned to his post as chair of Searle Pharmaceutical Corporation and later as chair of the Gilead Sciences. And just a side note, Gilead owned the patent for Tamiflu when people... so. For a while, Rumsfeld profited from the selling, the mass selling of Tamiflu all across the United States, which was advertised on TV after 9-11 and especially after the anthrax attacks in 2001. So the link between the U.S. pharmaceutical companies, the people in power, who's making the rules and decisions, all comes as a circle, and they go around there and call it the revolving door, right, of who's in power, who's making the rules, who's in government, who's in the corporations, and they go around and around. It doesn't matter who's the president. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or a Republican. They all do the same thing with the same people. So 
Rumsfeld returned as chair of Gilead Sciences, and after heading the CIA, President George Bush became a director of pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly, which also helped to bankroll Giuliani's campaign when he was running for president. Lilly was owned by the family, it still is, owned by the family of arch conservative vice president Dan Quayle. So what did he say? A mind, I forgot his saying, a mind is a, not a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Something like a waste is a terrible thing to waste. The, what? To lose, right, a mind is a terrible thing to lose. <laughs> that was Dan Quayle's great quote. So then the West Nile virus was first, uh, when the virus was first detected in New York City in 1999 under Giuliani, US government officials falsely considered it a bioterrorist attack by Iraq's president, Saddam Hussein. Wow, who remembers that? Nobody who supposedly had sent the virus to New York City. This was the only way that we were able to get funds originally to fight against West Nile virus or to do anything at all around that was to frame it as a bioterrorist attack, even though every scientist and their mother knew, who we interviewed en masse, knew that it wasn't a bioterrorist attack. This was all ridiculous. It was like a month later, it was pushed out of the press, but they felt that the only way they could get money from the federal government to help New York City at the time was to frame it that way, thus setting in motion a whole way of thinking that has plagued us, I believe, ever since. Here's a spraying, what the spraying of New York looked like in part from the spray trucks going around the city. This slide was, um, gotten when several of us jumped in a car and chased around the spray trucks as they went and we tried to cut them off and other people tried to run up and let the air out of the tires or, or people did and people risked, actually we didn't realize it at the time how much we were risking, didn't have gas masks, didn't, people just ran up to it and, you know, and tried to block the trucks from poisoning kids because there were all these children especially in the way of the spray and that was, they didn't care. They just didn't care and they still don't. They're still spraying by truck, even though we won our lawsuit, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Here's a, Van Howell did this great drawing. Van Howell from out here on Long Island originally. A great artist, this Mayor Giuliani in his helicopter. And here he is again. Been in the news a little bit lately, I hear. Hasn't changed at all. 